The following steps are necessary in order to establish an infection. Encounter, entry and speed, multiplication, damage, and outcome. We will review these separately. Encounter involves the infectious organism coming in contact with the host. This type of encounter varies depending on the host and the specific microorganism. An infectious microorganism will enter the host by either ingression or penetration. During ingression, the entry is through a system or via the skin. It does not involve deep tissue penetration. The microorganism invades the cell surface and excretes toxin into the host. Penetration involves the microorganism invading the epithelial barrier. The spread of the disease is caused by the propagation of the infectious organism in the host. Spread requires the infectious microorganisms to overcome the host's immune defenses. The degree of spread is determined by the host, the site of microbial entry, and the mechanism of microbe dissemination. Spread can take place either before or after multiplication. For example, the viruses that cause the common cold are easily spread as aerosols through coughing and sneezing. Multiplication is the growth of the microorganism in the host. Many infectious agents undergo a number of multiplication events before their impact is recognized by the host. Damage can be either direct or indirect. Indirect damage, cell death, is caused by the destruction of host cells or by the release of toxins or poisons by the infectious agent. In indirect damage, there is alteration of the host's metabolism. The infection can lead to life-threatening diseases. For example, Botulism is a rare and potentially fatal illness that is caused by bacterium Clostridium botulinum. It can be transmitted through food, an open wound, or from contaminated soil. There are three outcomes that can come from an infection. One, the host gains control of the infectious agent and eliminates it. Two, the infectious agent overcomes the host's immunities to cause a disease. Or three, the host and the infectious agent compromise and live in somewhat anxious state of symbiosis. We will now review stages of infections, which include the latent period, the incubation period or prodromal stage, the disease period, and the convalescent stage or period. There are four stages of infection. The first is the latent period. During the latent period, there are no symptoms. The next stage is the incubation period. This is the time that the host's defense are being overcome until a substantial population of microorganisms has been achieved. The microbe has multiplied enough for symptoms of the disease to appear. This period is also referred to as the prodromal stage. During the disease period, 
The symptoms continue to manifest and the host is communicable. The last stage is the convalescence period. During this stage, the organism may become latent and the disease may still be communicable. However, symptoms may cease to manifest. There are four variables in the chain of infection that must remain unbroken in order for an infection to spread. The first variable is the human host. The human host is an unprotected environment that nurtures the infection. The next variable is the infectious microorganism or causative agent. This can be any of the four pathogenics, microorganisms, bacteria, virus, fungi, or protozoa. Then comes transmission. Transmission is the path by which the virus enters or exits the host. An infection can enter the host by endogenous or exogenous methods. Endogenous infections are those that originate from within a host, such spore formation in an organism, tissue, or cell. Endogenous infections originate from outside of the host. For example, an encounter with a microbe in the environment, either through direct or indirect transmission. The reservoir is within the host. It is the warm, moist environment with an ideal pH for the virus to live and grow in. Of special note are carriers. Carriers are individuals who show no sign of illness, but have infectious microorganisms in or on their body. One famous example comes to mind. Mary Mallon, September 23, 1869 to November 11, 1938. She was known as Typhoid Mary. She was the first person in the United States identified as the asymptomatic carrier of the pathogen associated with typhoid fever. She was presumed to have infected 51 people, three of whom died over the course of her career as a cook. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our all-access pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.